Hey, what's up? This is MarketAlchemist.camp, where we learn Elixir and Phoenix by building things. Today, I'm going to talk about streams and also the advent of code. If you're not familiar with it, the advent of code is a little challenge that happens every year where we can get a new, actually, a, in this case, a two-part programming problem each day uh, from the 1st through the 25th of December. And by doing these increasingly difficult puzzles, we just get to practice and see how other people solve things. And usually you end up learning something, especially if you use a newer programming language or a programming language that's newer for you for the advent of code. So I gave it my first shot. I've never done this before, but I, I did one for Elixir this time. And I also want to share a solution from uh, Sasa 1977 on GitHub. That's uh, Sasa Zurich. I hope I didn't mispronounce the name. He wrote Elixir in Action, a very good book published by Manning. So let's have a look at day one. So there, it's, a, it's this long word problem, but basically we've got a rocket ship and there are elves and there are modules of the rocket ship. Each one takes a certain amount of fuel based on its mass and gives us a formula here. Find the fuel for a required module, take its mass, divide by three, round down and subtract two. So for example, if the mass is 12, we divide by three, round down to get four, then subtract two to get two. If it's 14, we divide by three, uh, rounding down, we still just have four with the remainder of two that we throw away. And we subtract two as before to get two. And then it gives a couple other examples. So the way I solved this was I, I just used IEX because it was it was so simple. Um, I uh, didn't even look at the, the second half of the problem though. So I made it too simple maybe. So our rule is, actually let's first get the module masses. You know what, I don't see them here, so I'm just going to paste them into a new file. And in fact, let's, uh, let's just use the power of VS Code to uh, quickly edit all of these. So let me do that. And backspace, comma, space. Now they're all separated by commas. Hit escape to get rid of the multi-cursors. And we'll put this into one big long list, like so. So now I can paste it into IEX. So I'll just say uh, modules equals that. And remember, these are modules of a spaceship. So this is just the mass of each of them. We don't know the units. Maybe it's kilograms. Maybe it's something else. So let's see. Our, our equation is divide by 3, round down, and then subtract 2. So we'll just make a function in line here. So calc is an anonymous function takes an input, we'll call it x, and that returns uh, x divided by three. Now this is, uh, this is an integer, so we'll use div x comma three, that divides by three and throws away the remainder, and subtracting two after that, and then end, close the function. Now let's just test this function out. So calc uh, dot, we need a dot here because it's anonymous. Uh, we'll try 14, that gets us 2 as expected, 12 gets us 2 as expected, 1969 gets us a mass of 654 as expected, and finally we'll try it with the largest input they provided. Looks like we're on the right track. So now all we need to do is do the same calculation on every single one of these module masses to get the amount of fuel we need to send that module into space. So to do that, we're just going to take the modules, which I just called modules. This is the masses of each module and pass that into enum.map. And we need to give it a function. That's gonna be calc. And let's take a look at this here. So we've got smaller numbers for all of these. That's the amount of fuel that each one takes. Then we can add them all up with enum.reduce. That takes a function with two arguments and one plus the second argument. So this is an anonymous function here that I started with the ampersand. 
then the ampersand one is just the first argument to it, ampersand two is the second. That is going to be the exact same thing as if I had done function uh, a and b, a plus b, and it's just a little bit less verbose, and it's very clear what I'm doing here is I'm just adding it all up. So do that, that's my answer, I submitted it, it was right. So really, uh, the first problem, the very first problem, day one, is so simple you can do it all in IEX, which is what I did. After submitting it and getting my star for it, I went over to the Elixir forums, there was a thread on this, and checked out everybody else's answers. Unsurprisingly, most people did not use IEX. In fact, maybe I was even the only one. Uh, a lot of people used uh, entire mix projects for it. And I guess that's because the problems get harder as time goes on. And, and by the time you get to day 30 or whatever, or day 25, you'll definitely need a full project instead of just some throwaway thing in a REPL. Here is one of the solutions that I really liked. And it's mostly, it is a whole mixed project, but it's mostly self-contained. The only part that's not is this, which is just to get the module masses from an input file. And the rest of it, we can just step through. It's very similar to what I did. Uh, part one, we've got this required fuel simple. This is a named function that does the same thing as my anonymous one did. Basically what mine did, it's got the mass divided by three without a remainder, minus two, and then it's got a max wrapping this entire thing around it, getting the max of that in zero. I guess that's in case there were a negative mass. Then the other major difference is, well, other than the fact that it also solves part two, which I didn't even notice when I went over to look at it, is this is using streams. And that makes sense because uh, the list could be very, very long, and we could just uh, use a streaming function to do them one at a time. And also enum.sum is a special version of exactly the same thing I did, the reduce adding uh, one to the other. Enum.sum, I think, just does exactly what I wrote under the covers, adds up the list, and it's, um, it's uh, easier to understand if you don't, if you're not that comfortable with reduce and um, obviously if you see it you'll know that the function exists I didn't even remember that that existed um, all right so we're using stream.map which basically does what enum.map does except it returns a stream so here we've got enum.map changes to stream.map and you can see we have the stream and some data here, the enum that we're streaming over and the function, and it's not actually processing it. But once we put an enum.sum at the end, it will do the exact same thing that uh, we had before. Um, in fact, it could be like enum.map, same thing. So let's say we had a map that took in each element and just returned exactly that same element, doing nothing to it. You can see it still pops us out of the stream. And part two is pretty straightforward. Oh, it does have something here saying treat negative fuel as zero fuel. That totally explains this max here, getting the greater of zero or whatever the calculation was. Um, basically, part two is just saying that uh, after we add fuel to carry the module mass, we've added mass to the spaceship. So we also need to add fuel for the mass of the fuel we just added. And then that fuel also needs to have fuel to carry it up. Um, but you just repeatedly do this calculation rounding down to zero. So once you get to where the fuel of the fuel of the however many times down is less than one, then we just throw, the, throw away the remainder and stop calculating. The tool that uh, Sasa used here in this uh, solution is not one I saw anyone else using, but it's it's a great choice. The stream.iterate with the function required fuel simple is actually calling the same function again and again to generate a stream. 
So this is an infinite stream that will just be created from calling this function again and again and again. We start out with a mass. So some mass from the module is passed in, then we calculate how much fuel it needs, and then we calculate how much fuel that fuel needs, and on and on and on. Then the stream.drop gets rid of the first value in that list we're building up from stream.iterate. That first value is the mass of the module. So what we have left is the first order fuel calculation, the second order fuel calculation, the third order calculation, and so on. And stream.take while will uh, take from this stream that's being generated by iterate while the element being passed in, the first and only one, because we're just eating the list one step at a time, is greater than zero. So basically what that means is as long as this, uh, this number is greater than zero, we just keep calling this function on it again and again and again. The drop only happens once. So I know that's a bit to take in. So we'll take this value here. This is one module, weighs 106,001 somethings. We don't know the units. And pass that into stream.iterate. I'm going to use my function calc instead of, uh, uh, instead of this version. None of these numbers are going to be lower than zero, definitely with this input. We'd have to have a negative input for that to happen, so uh, we can be safely convinced that it's the same. And that will start the stream. And then we'll do stream.take while the first element is, or while the element passed in is greater than zero. And we can see we've still got a stream. If we want to just see what that looks like, we can do that same trick I did above, enum.map, just mapping every element to itself. So you can see we've got this original value, the fuel we need for to carry that. This is how much fuel we need to carry this much fuel. Then we need this much fuel to carry this much, and so on down to the end. And we don't need any fuel at all to carry uh, something that weighs two units. Um, now, if we go back and put in stream.drop1, you can see we just lose that first value. So what we've got here is just the mass of the fuel that we're adding. And we can do that same enum.reduce first element plus second element. So that just goes down the list and adds it up. It's the same thing as enum.sum. So the sum of all of these is this amount of fuel. So we have this one uh, procedure for getting uh, the fuel for any given module. And in order to do the entire thing, we just have to uh, enum.map over our uh, all of our modules. So that would be, actually let me clear that. Uh, what we just wrote wasn't quite right because this entire thing has to be a function. So we'll just say calc all equals this function. And we're going to stream.iterate x and that calculation. Then we'll go to the end and end our function call. I believe that is correct. And let's just test this, make sure that we're not crazy. What did we just test here? We were testing 106,000. Okay, so we'll try calc all, and we get the same value. So there we go. And we can see that we probably crossed a threshold at some point where it would have made more sense to do it in a module than in IEX. But in any case, check it out. I'm going to leave a link to this GitHub repo in the video description. And also, I've got a new thing on Alchemist Camp on each of the episodes and each of the articles. If you scroll down towards the bottom, there's a button on them where you can see this level up your Elixir skills request a free email course. This is a new thing that I've set up. It'll take you to 
a really quick survey, like a 30 second survey about like what your Elixir level is and your programming background. And based on what you send me, I will suggest what's probably the most useful content on all of the literally hundreds of episodes and articles on the site. Till next time, code on.